are back. So I have one final question for you. And I have one final answer. <laughs> so what exactly makes a locust a locust? So the word locust is thrown out there a lot and people often use it to describe cicadas. So in late summer, usually around June, you'll start hearing just kind of everywhere in bushes. That's a cicada. Cicadas are not locusts. Cicadas are true bugs. Um, we don't have any live specimens now, so I'm showing you some pinned ones. Um, there are a lot of different types of cicadas. So as I said, they're true bugs. They're in the same order, hemiptera, as stink bugs, aphids, assassin bugs, water bugs. Um, it's a pretty big order. And what they all have in common is these little needle-like mouth parts that they use to drink uh, fluids from plants, or in some species, um, fluids from their prey. They catch other insects to eat. But um, yeah, cicadas, there's a, some are quite large. We have like the, uh, I always forget the common name, the Megatabesin dalebatis, the, I think it's the plains harvest fly cicada. That's our common large one in the bosque here. We also have the, um, I'm not sure if it's the Apache cicada or if it's a similar species, but basically this one here, a smaller black cicada you see also in the city a lot. Um, yeah, so not locusts, cicadas. Not a locust. So what about these other guys we got in here? Are these locusts? Or, so, or when do they yes become no. locusts? So locust, um, there is no taxonomic definition for locust except for that it's basically um, any grasshopper that takes a swarming behavior or adapts a swarming behavior at a certain point in its life. So um, what does that mean? Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. So swarming. So it's really interesting. Uh, so grasshoppers, they lay their eggs in the ground. They hatch. They start eating everything. They eat a wide variety of uh, grass and herb species. Um, so in some species, they have this cool adaptation to where if they're crowded enough as nymphs growing up, they develop this behavior to fly in large groups and look for other places to feed. So, um, and what causes that is touch. They've done experiments where they actually built a tickle machine in the laboratory and tested it on developing grasshoppers of certain species. And ones that got tickled X amount of times during their development um, started to swarm, which means they would take flight all at the same time and just go large distances. If there's a small enough population to where they're not going to exhaust the food supply in an area and there's not a lot of touching or not a lot of tickling <laughs> as they did in the lab, they don't develop this behavior and they stay put and just feed as solitary grasshoppers and reproduce there. So what about like these other two guys? So like, is this another grasshopper species? Yes. So there's so any grasshopper can of grasshopper. swarm. Not any. Um, there's a lot of species that do. Here's a couple that, um, and I don't know my uh, grasshoppers very well. That's okay. Not one of my uh, groups that I'm super knowledgeable about. But um, these are some common ones you'll find around Albuquerque. Um, I'm not sure if either of these will swarm at some point. It's only certain species that will do that behavior. But they're all grasshoppers. Family Acrididae, which is the true grasshoppers. Um, so yeah, locust is a grasshopper that swarms. That's pretty much the definition. But it's only grasshoppers that swarm, not katydids, cicadas, or any nope. other hoppy thing? Nope, of the orthoptera, I believe it's only uh, grasshopper species. Not sure on that. My worst nightmare. Well, thanks for answering that question. Absolutely. <laughs> awesome, and we will do a whole episode on true bugs, so you just wait. Oh yes, coming up next, true bugs. <laughs>